Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Heroic League. Sorry for the delay, but we've got an exciting matchup for you. Team R versus really late sign up. <laughs> I'm Rap Terror, joined again by Erebus as we get on to this draft. Two subs actually coming in for here. Um, so Coco the Dragon in for Team Aw, and it does say Ruby, but it is actually going to be Calorie there in the mid lane. Okay, yeah, you know, I'm excited to see Kauri come back. I want to see a LeBlanc ban or a LeBlanc picked up again, see if we can get another 18 kill game. That'd be awesome. Coco, oh, actually, very wait, fan they confirmed it is actually Ruby. Sorry, okay, it, it is, is actually Ruby. Ruby has, it is there. We're fine. We're good. <laughs> All righty, cool. Now, Coco played jungle last game and did very, very, very well. I'm excited to see how they play mid lane. Yeah, I'm excited too. This should be an interesting matchup. Both of these teams, you know, have had good seasons so far. RLS, a fantastic start to this season, nine and two on the board, despite their constantly changing lineup. And Team Aw is still looking good with this six and five and looking to start it off with a Vi. Yeah, you know, XT during Mythic said that he found a more successful way to play, and uh, I definitely agree with that. And the Vi has been really enabling his new play style. Volibear, I love seeing Volibear, Ante, and Warleader love flexing it. And then the Karma picked up that's going to be on Escape, I believe. It might be Karma mid, I really doubt it, but I think Escape's on Karma duty. Uh, and then that Swain ban might seem a little weird. Coco the Dragon's actually a Swain main. So, learn something new every day. Up the magic swain I... lives by the sea. <laughs> Another support coming through. Looks like it's going to be this pike. It is locked in for rare Adam. We haven't seen pike in a bit, actually. I don't think we haven't. And pikes, when pike is played well, pike is very, very obnoxious and very, very strong. They left Fiora open up for Jaffe again. Okay. All right, everybody, quick little lesson. Don't give Fiora Jaffe. Don't give him gangplank. You did, you did one of the two things very close. Uh, I'm assuming RLS has some sort of secret strat they've cooked up with Ante uh, that's going to counter it. We'll see. But Jaffe so far has been unstoppable on Fiora. And I'd like a Talia. I think Talia's in a really good place. I think Talia and Volibear together make some really good early to mid game plays. I think so too. And I think I think it's actually going to be War Leader on the Volibear. I think they're holding Anti's champion for last. Yeah, it's and absolutely going to be Jungle Volibear. Uh, they're going to. I know Ante has decided he has a matchup that wins against Fiora, and I want to see what it is. Uh, I'm going to guess he's going to pull out Warwick. But I'm just going to uh, throw it out. I'm going to throw a dart. I think he's going to pick Warwick. That's my bet. I'm going to bet you 100 channel points he picks a Warwick. All right. All right. All right. I will take you up on that. All right. What cool. do I think he is going to pick with what there is left? I think he takes Darius. Okay, Darius? I, yeah, I, I think he's going to take the Darius. You know, that that's a safe bet, Rap Kench. Uh, but, I, you know, War could be fun. That'd be a fun pick. It That'd would be. be. It, be it would be a day. fun. I would love to see a Warwick top. It's something we don't see very often. It would be really cool. I mean, what's also cool is just how far these teams are looking to pinch the 80 carry pools. Two 80 carries are already off the board in the second half of the ban phase. Neither team picked one up in the first half. <laughs> So yeah. Jinx is surprising for a ban, um, especially with I don't think Jinx is in an amazing. I don't think she's in a terrible spot. She's not in a great spot and it doesn't really parallel with Pike. Uh, Misfortune makes sense. Uh, and MXL has a really, really strong AD champion pool. So it looks like they have something specific. They want to play bot that doesn't do well into Jinx or Tristana. And I'm interested to see what they're going to pair with that Karma. Yeah, I'm interested to usually you pick that with a carry that either you want to be lane dominant with or with one that you are looking to give a lot of shielding to and peel for later. So maybe, yeah, maybe it's Senna again. They've been having success on Senna. Usually you want to pair it with a tankier champion. I doubt it's Senna. Uh, I see someone saying Samira. Come on, Samira could be fun. Could be, be real. Nice. It's not going to be Samira. Come on, Oriri. What are you doing? Could be, could be, could be Nila. I would actually love to see a Neela. I think Neela's a fun champion. I know not everyone's bread and butter, but she is fun. And it would pair really well if they do lock in this Diana, basically a double Diana combo wombo. Yeah. I guess it is going to be Volibear top if they lock that in then. Yes. You know, uh, I'm surprised. I don't know. I'm surprised they left Fiora up is all I'm going to say. If they're going to go Volibear top. 
Yeah, Jaffe, a pretty dominant Fiore we've seen in the past. So very interesting if they just leave that open. The Samira coming through, though, for Team Aw, it looks for like. Team Aw, that makes a lot more sense. Oriri, I apologize. I thought you were saying RLS was going to pick it. MXL is fantastic on Samira. The team comp is very, very strong for Samira. Uh, and Samira is a gross champion with an early lead. Pike Samira is a very, very strong lane, and it's very hard to deal with. Uh, it's a very snowball -y champion. If you get three kills given over, it's going to be a bad time. Nico, whoa, yeah, Coco is played in, is is a Nico player. Seen him play it before, so good pick. I don't know if it really matches with the rest of this comp. This is a team that's basically, you know, it enables whole, Samira. I'd say it enables yeah. Samira very well. Yeah, it still feels like an odd comp. It's a very heavy engaged comp though, and definitely is playing around this Samira Pike bottom lane. As the Zaya locked in for with the Karma. I like the Zaya Karma lane. I think it lends a lot of innate safety into the Samira engage. Now it is gonna be it's gonna really depend on how rare Adam plays Pike for bot lane, mid lane. Um I'm expect Nico counters Talia's shove pretty well, but I think Talia has a little more power in the kit. Nico's a better team fight champion early on, but Talia is gonna have more consistent damage. And top lane, we're going to see how it goes. I, I think overall the drafts look pretty even. I'm going to give it to Team Ah because I think they're going to be able to pull off the Samira pretty well. Jaffe's on his signature champion. And yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see how this one goes. I am too. Cannot wait to see how this game gets underway as we get on to the rip. Team Ah versus RLS. The top of the board versus the mid. Both these teams continuing to jockey for his position, especially RLS trying to keep that win lead that they've got going. Try to keep possession of first place away from Art of War. And, ah, jockey for position so they can get a better matchup going into the playoffs. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. Um, I think, it, you know, I mean, RLS is playing for that first, for first place, and then Ah is playing for top four, right? Uh, I really don't know what to expect this game. I think this is going to be a banger. I'm really, really, really excited for this one. This is going to be my match of the week. I'm going to label it right now. Sorry, Bill. Uh, you, you might have picked a different one. This is my match of the week, and I'm pumped. Yeah, I'm pretty hyped for this. This is a, this is an exciting matchup. I, the members of um, Team A, you know, they're all very strong players. We've seen some impressive performances out of them. I want to see them grow. I think I think they have a lot of room for growth. I think of them as a dark horse. You know, we, we think of AWE and RLS as the top teams in this league. I think of AWE as a team that you know can be a bit of a dark horse here. A team that, if everything lines up well, which is a game that could really prove if it does, can be an absolute terror to reckon with. Yeah, I agree with you 100%. Uh, almost every single person on that team has the ability to carry, which is something you want to see. And not a lot of teams have that. They usually have one or two primary carries and some good... Oh, oh Tef getting hooked early. Tef no. getting caught early by MXL. Not a good trade back on MXL. He's yeah, in trouble. They're, yeah, they're going back into him, chasing him down, but they're both. he's just going to walk away. That actually going oh. in favor Ooh, of RLS. Very close on just blowing up MXL there. That was a very good... I, that didn't look great at the beginning, but you know... Uh, Karma and Zaya is a very safe lane that also does a lot of damage at the same time. And Escape is very, very, very good at playing enchanters. Uh, as an AD carry, I think it's the easiest role to translate over to. You see how he's standing in front of the wave right now, queuing. That's going to prevent MXL from really being able to get anything off more than just his queues off. Cool. Oh, and first blood to Tef. Hit yeah, level two, it is going to be first. Out. First blood going over to Tef. It's just two very on, yeah. abrupt there. It's two on the minions. Throws out the Q. I think maybe one auto and then just ease back. Dead. Nope, not even yep. the auto. Okay, cool. <laughs> nice. Didn't even have a chance to even cast what's going on. Just it explodes there. <laughs> not a second thought. Yeah. Or less manages to take the lead. I really like how Escape's playing that lane. A lot of times on Enchanters and solo queue, stuff like that, they kind of hang back a little bit. Karma is a lane bully. When you stand in front, even if you get pie cooked, you have shield, you have damage coming back. It's going to be okay. Oh, XT has Ante a little back. caught out. XT is on the way up here. Jaffe going in onto him. Anti trying to get away. Flashes out. Going back in for the shield, mm. but is going to pay for with his life. XT picking up the kill. I don't like the flash there. I think you just got to accept your fate. Uh, that was a really good kill at XT. XT, you know, saw it shoved up. 
no wards either for being up under tower, and that's just a clean kill picked up. And Jaffa gets to collect that entire wave safely under tower. Pretty happy. Yeah, now another gank into the mid lane. Oh, the flash from Ruby saves his life from XT. Very good potential. This is a very strong roaming composition. Now Ruby looking does spot rare Adam. He's not going to get picked. But yeah, this is a very heavy roam team. You've got the Pike. You've got the Vi. This is a team looking to comp. We're looking to find that position, to find those opportunities like anti here, up without wards to gank. Oh, and yeah. Get those. He's up war he's up without wards because he knew that XT started topside. You don't expect Vi to do three camps and then just run up top because That's if, fair. Diana, if Diana's aware of it, your entire bot jungle's gone. You lose a kill, but like you're down a lot of experience. Oh, and MXL's oh. having a really bad time right now. He is having a bad time. He has to burn the exhaust so he doesn't get the feathers pulled to kill him. But that's just going to leave him open for later. The so root lands under Ruby in the mid lane. Coco performing fairly well on this Nico up seven CS right now. But yeah, so early on, it, is, it feels like it's a little bit later in this game than than four minutes and 20 seconds in. Yeah, but it's very even across the board right now. Yeah, it's a very even game. I'll have to see if people if these second five lands very top side so far the focus coming out of team awe oh and ruby getting lit up Ruby's there gets the onto him coco chasing him down he is dead the Need flash, the flash. <laughs> unnecessary <laughs> but does manage to pick up the solo kill in the mid lane and yeah that's the power of nico i think nico while not necessarily it's one of those champions where in professional play it doesn't work for a few reasons but i think if you're not a professional which most people aren't it's a very underutilized and strong champion that has, you know, a lot of playmaking potential and a lot of just straight up damage in their kit, right? That was a no item Nico and, well, you know, kill Groovy, <laughs> just straight up. Yeah, you go Glen Coco the dragon. You go Glen Coco the dragon, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, it's so great. Now War Leader coming down, looking for an opportunity. I don't think they spot out. No, they did, did they? No, MLX goes back in. War Leader going in, goes right onto MXL. The flash forward from Escape to get the root, but the flash from MXL to just dodge it. And the Q comes in, gets him low, but manages to get out. Team Oz bot lane escapes with their life. <laughs> yeah, oh, but they're going onto War Leader, gets pulled over the wall, and is going to walk away. Yeah. Now, there's a pretty big CS lead coming in bot lane. Uh, they've frozen the wave, which you don't see a lot coming out. Usually people just kind of randomly push their advantage and just shove under tower. Uh, with the way Escape's playing and the way Test's playing, they're going to have a pretty consistent CS and XP lead for the majority of the time until XT comes down to fix the lane. And that might happen right now. Yeah, they are coming down. Coco and XT going in on to Escape. They take him out right there. Where leader gets ignited and is forced to back off. RLS has to give up the dragon that they were so clearly think, trying to aim yeah. for and it cost them their life i think that team ah should have just gone for it i think i think that's a free mountain dragon you're catching tough on a back uh you know ruby was on a back i think it's just a free objective picked up but you know regardless they got a kill xt is looking really good i think xt has been initially started off a little bit weaker in the jungle side of the league and has become one of the more feared junglers. I think he's had almost no bad games to the point that he's been enabling his team with a very, very early ganks and very, very strong early pressure to the point where they can kind of win. Uh, and he's 2-0 right now. And it's seven minutes on by. Looking really good. Yeah, it's been looking great so far. And now the Nico is up here. I thought that was almost XT for a moment until I saw the bling. Looking for an opportunity. War Leader hasn't spotted him. Neither of them has spotted each other. They don't know their hero. I think he sees the minion. The, they, tra the, they trade one for one if they don't see War Leader doing this. Uh, Ante's going to die if they do this right, but it looks like Ruby's coming up as well, so they might lose two. Yeah, here they go, going in onto him. The bear comes out, Coco comes through. Ruby's up here as well, and it's th four people actually up here. Coco looking for something, but in goes Anti, takes out Jaffy. XT looking to maybe get a kill or looking to make up something, but the turret shots. Why are you diving that deep, my boy? XT gets taken down. Now escape chasing onto Coco, trying to root him up. There is no escape to it for Coco. War leader coming in with a shield is going to pick up the kill. Three for nothing in favor of RLS. Yeah, and that's just pure knowledge, pure game knowledge out of Ante, right? I believe he was calling that he was going to be getting dove. They don't have vision of where Coco was. Uh, Escape makes the roam up, and War Leader's already there. 
Ruby comes up with ult, and they lose nobody on it at all. Ideally, you want to Siante die there if you're Team Ah, but that didn't happen, and great play at RLS. Yeah, fantastic play coming out of the side from the side of RLS. And this team, you know, oh, Escape gets hooked by Rare Adam. They I do think get he's the just hair. Being an, oh, Vi, well, Vi is there. I don't know if they know Vi is there. I don't think they do. XT, though, is not level six. He's going to have a hard time engaging the E forward from Rare Adam getting super low. He's going to have to back out as Ruby throws the rocks. Yeah, and um, with both supports roaming, the CS deficit has been cut a little bit bot lane. Samira is not in a bad spot anymore. That's, Samir is one of those champions where you can be down one or two kills, and once you have a good team fight, uh, the game just kind of entirely flips, almost like like that. Now, I will say, oh my gosh. Ooh, wow, Ruby just taking so much damage from Coco. <laughs> Yikes, that, that's got to hurt. Um, RLS does have a lot of ways to stop Samira's ultimate from going off, but the problem is with Samira's ult and, uh, you know, Nico kind of rooting everybody, Pike's going to have a field day, right? If, oh, if yeah, one person gets low, there's going to be a lot of resets going off, a lot of damage coming off. I have faith RLS can play it properly, but it's going to be difficult. Yeah, you might, some might say this is a little cheesy of a comp coming out from uh, Team A. I think it's a comp that just wants to just snowball out of control. And the pike, I agree, is going to be the factor that determines that. Adam, though, hasn't been able to find a kill or even an assist yet. This pike hasn't been quite as useful. Yeah, not and just yet. And I, you know, I think their idea is good, right? RLS is a very, very strong team mentally. So if they're, you know, like, but they are exploitable early. They aren't always the best at laning. War Leader always is fantastic. Um, no more sixth place jungler. Uh, oh. But, like, yeah. they just, Never. if you're oh. going to beat RLS, you can't give them a lead because they're going to yeah. utilize it to defeat it. And XT's yeah, now in there. XT going in under War Leader gets the ult onto him. Here comes Coco with the ult, the flash forward, but misses Tep, who goes Great for golden as well. Managed to take out XT on the side, though. The Samir grabbing the Karma and Pike falls as well. Rare Adam going down. Now Tef and MXL dueling each other. Tef on the wrong side of the map, but gets the root. It's going to try to find a way out of this. The flash over from MXL picks up the kill onto Tef. A two for two trade over the dragon. Yeah, Samir grabs two kills. Um, I mean, overall, it looks pretty neutral for the most part, right? But Samira picked up two kills. Ruby and Warleader went the opposite way of Tef. Now, whose fault that is, you know, I didn't actually see. I saw Tef, I saw Tef do a great ult. Uh, Warleader and Ruby chase up. If they just go down and peel the Samira, they might not pick up the kill that they were chasing, but they do prevent Samira from having that snowball angle. And now Samira is definitely back online from that early disadvantage. Yeah, coming back online. That was or... a weird team fight. <laughs> yeah, it was a very weird team. These are weird. It's hard. It's hard to really call these fights. They're kind of odd. That one especially was just incredibly weird. Just kind of scattered more like individual brawls than a straight up yeah. fight. Now Anti going in onto Jaffe, but here's XT. War Leader is coming down. The ult coming out of Anti goes unstoppable. War Leader is here, though. The ult from Fiora is down. Rare Adam also up here, but escape his mid on Coco. Manages to root him down, but gets rooted himself. Coco. Gonna get out. Everyone, everyone gets out fine. No one get, no one dies. Everyone just has has a good time. A little party. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of roams going on out of everybody. Uh, War Leader, I'd say War Leader's best trade is he's very good at matching or knowing where the enemy jungler is going to be at almost. Oh, every now Teth and MXL in oh. a big duel. The feathers come through. They do hit MXL, but not enough to root, and the block doesn't come through. And now Ruby catches Rare Adam. He has to dash to get out. So this is pure chaos of a game. A lot of <laughs> skirmishing going on. Uh, Ante is down about 30 CS top. He has two kills to make up for it, but that's something to watch. You know, Jaffe on Fiora, it, it almost seems like it's kind of a ticking time bomb, right? Eventually, Jaffe's going to just do some sort of Jaffe insane person thing, get a kill. Two people are going to come up, Jaffe will get a kill, get away, and then the the, uh, the team will get Dragon in like three towers. So I think they need to work on shutting down Jaffe or at least getting Ante to the point that he's going to be able to effectively neutralize Jaffe. Uh, as their main focus right now. I would also try to get Dragon sooner than oh, later. Flash four from XT and the ultimate. They lock down Ruby and just take him out. Big that, play. That might be a free combo um, every time that XT has ultimate. Uh, it's going to be a so. free, it's going to be a free route out of Nico. Doesn't have to burn ult, just a lot of damage. And Ruby's 
going to have a bad time with it. And I think you're just, you don't want to have Talia play under tower. That might be the solution. Oh, please. and now Escape has to flash Ooh, with the flash. Mirror flash. manages to get the stun up. War Leader goes in. They manage to grab oh, Lumber Adam. Goes out. Double goodness. kill. Go into Tef. Coco is here as is XT. They're going on this dragon. Embers of RLS kind of low. XT doesn't have ultimate, but Coco does. Coco, this monster is here. Comes the ultimate, gets two with it, gets escape, gets Tef. Tef oh. goes down. Now War Leader trying to duel out XT. It gets taken down by him though. And they're on the run. Escape trying to run away. Manages to get the Q, is gonna get out. His life, what a brutal back and forth. We're 16 kills into not even a 14 minute game yet. And the gold's it's only up 1k. Now, that's a zero item. That's a zero mythic Nico that is causing pretty much flipping. <laughs> I mean, they had ult and nobody in RLS did, but Tef got one shot pretty much. War Leader dies as well, and Diana's pretty tanky sometimes. Uh, and they lose Dragon for it. I think that the uh, Coco the Dragon's going to be a big issue. I think so too. Coco just kind of blew. Why are we feeding these mid laners here in the Heroic oh League? God. Uh, I, I guess they reverted the durability patch without telling us because people are getting blown up this week. Um, <laughs> but the, I mean, the beginning of the fight looked great. Uh, Rare Adam had a great flash onto escape and then MXL got in, but then War Leader canceled both of their combos with his ultimate and Tef had a perfect ult and got a double kill. It looked good until it didn't. I think they probably should have just backed off in respect of that Nico had ultimate. Yeah. Tef just kind of blazing through this bottom lane right now. 4 2 and 0 on the board. Now, Rare Adam gets caught out by War Leader. Going in, manages to root him up, trying to get him, and just takes him down. Solo kills the support. Pike is scary, but not in a and duel. Now, XT, XT looking for Ruby, gets the ult onto him. Coco's going to try to land the root, but the flash out from Ruby manages to save his life. Yeah. Um,. Rare Adam's not having the best Pike game so far. Uh, there hasn't really been a team fight to utilize anything, and for whatever reason, War Leader just kind of knows where he is at all points of the game. Like, every time Rare Adam goes for something, War Leader is there to ruin his plan, ruin his day, make him have a bad time. Uh, but it looks like XT and Coco the Dragon are going to be able to pick up Rift Herald off of that play as well. So a net, I'd say it's a net positive over to Team A. They they've picked up the Dragon, they're picking up Rift Herald. Feels good, man. Yeah, but the gold lead is starting to go up for RLS, up 2,000 gold now, just a little over that. Looking scary, though. Coco wasn't able to get to that fight in time. I think if Coco had been there a second earlier, Ruby dies. I just think it absolutely gets Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, and Coco has now finished an item, Everfrost. So along with the root and the Nico E, you are now going to be Everfrosted, so you're not moving for the entirety of your life bar. Which is kind of <laughs> gross, but kind of cool if you're uh, Coco the Dragon. We got top battle. Yeah. Jaffy fighting yeah. in the wave. Ja Jaffy gets the ult, and here comes XT looking for it. Bear gonna get it from you. Nope, XT I think he just misses runs it. Out. Anti gets the ult to get over the wall, is running away, getting beat up. It is so tanky. Rare Adam is here as well. Going in. Oh, the flashback over to mm. kill Jaffy. Anti, you are a madman. Now, what I like what Anti does against Fiora that a lot of people don't do, even though it's pretty easy, is when Fiora pops ult, you just put your back onto part of the terrain, and she cannot proc her fourth vital. And that's exactly what he was doing. If you watch where he was standing, he just puts his back onto the terrain, autos Jaffe, and a very significant portion of Fiora's damage is not available to be procced. Uh, yeah. I w yeah, I... I wish more people would do it. I see some people try to. I'd say Ante does the best at it, and he turns around a three-person gank and gets a kill. Yeah, now the gank returning again. Hunt for the bear. They do harpoon him. XT going in. His He's bear down. is strong, but doesn't have ult. Trying to get away. Oh. The ult from the pike. Oh, no. to get the kill. Anti is going to go down. It's a shutdown for him, but War Leader is here. The exhaust coming down. Waiting for it. The ult, though, comes. Hits two. Is he going to be able to pick up one? He is not. A double kill to XT as MLX comes in coco roman up not gonna find anything but the herald is dropped this is going to be a turret down the first turret for the side of team aw they bring themselves back into this game yeah that you know um ante stayed a little too long it is what it is uh war leader probably should not have engaged the 1v3 and i think he knows that uh, but XT is 16-1 with a 300 bounty, and it's looking pretty good. Actually, not down very... Vi is not hard to farm on, but, you know, with the amount of ganks he's been getting off, he's only down, like, camp. It's something you really want to see. 
Yeah, doing I, fantastic work on this Vi. This Vi has been just a menace this game all over the map, finding pick after pick. Yeah, it's it's been a hectic game. Uh, it seems like there's a 4v4 happening in every part of the lane at every point in time, and there's just a whole lot going on. Uh, there's a pretty significant CS lead in top. Uh, tower went down. I think they're going to trade towers very shortly. Fiora is bot, recalling, might be able to catch up in time, has TP. Probably doesn't want to use it to get up to the tower, and then we have Mount. What's our dragon this time? Not Mount. Did you see what the dragon was? I did not see if we can float a little bit in that direction. Thank you, observers. I think it's... Is it Infernal? I think it... No, because the map no. hasn't changed yet. This is the second dragon. It's still second yeah. dragon. Oh, yeah. the dragon coming up. Yes, it is in... No, it's not Infernal. I cannot tell. Well, well we have a dragon moment, coming up. We have a mystery yeah. dragon coming up, and we will see. Top tower gets picked up. Yeah, you know, it's to be expected. And everybody's converging onto mid lane in a kind of awkward formation. I don't think you want to be in a choke point as RLS versus this team. But that's yeah. a lot of damage coming out onto the clone. <laughs> we all, I thought it was the real Coco too. I'm like, Coco? But managed to get out four people here now on the bottom side. Jaffe and Anti up top. Anti trying to push the turret, but got to be careful. Jaffe is so monstrous right now. The teleport coming in from Anti XT going in. Has to flash out for seeing the teleport. Ruby diving in, looking for something. But not going to find anything rare. Adam going to look to go over the wall. The dragon is coming off. It is a Hextech dragon. It is going to go down, and it's going to be Cloud Soul for this game. And that's a little boring. I know people preach the Cloud Soul. Uh, eh, whatever. You can go fast, whatever. You know, I, I want to see explosions. I want to see... Perma healing. I want to see Hextech craziness, but a dragon's a dragon, I guess. You can go a little yeah. bit faster. And it, yeah, it could be worse. Know, it could be honest, or, yeah. Uh, it could be a be mountain honest, or, it could be a shield. The shields are, you know, at least it's a visible thing, right? But, yeah. yeah um, oh, oh, oh. Coco flashing forward for three hits. The old cakes out. Escape, but is going to trade his life in the process. Tap managing to escape with the old. I, I don't think that's worth that. Uh, you pick up escape, but. Like, Escape didn't use anything. He used your flash engage. It looked cool. Yeah. So props on that. Absolutely That's did. Tef but Tef, yeah, Tef getting caught by MXL gets taken out. Anti is here. Anti, more like Ant Bai, is just going to run away. MLX trying to kill him with the ult and gets the, it gets the double kill. And now they're going to get this oh. mid turret, I think, unless Warleader and Ruby can stop them. Adam misses the pull but Jaffe is here as well sides so give up on the split push for a bit help them take this turret and team awe has finally gained the lead in this game yeah i don't know what rls was doing in mid lane there they got the dragon and they didn't reset and then end of they weren't even grouped they were just kind of like i don't know that was weird it was a good it was a good catch out on team awe and now they are back in the game and they i think they're in the driver's seat to be honest the samir is really strong and the Nico's really strong, and the Vi's really strong, and Jaffe is up 70 CS. So we're going to, I guess Jaffe's going to split. I think they're going to have to force something soon on RLS's side to even it out a little bit and kind of gain momentum back to it and start leading resources pretty soon. I agree, and Rare Adam, very low right there. Ruby is starting to climb back into this game. He's gotten the CS lead, but the kill's just on Coco. Coco has just been such a monster this game. And, I mean, all of the team off the most part, even Jaffe, despite being 0-2, has managed to do fairly well in this top lane, still with that about 70 CS lead. I think he might be up gold. Can we get a gold check? Uh, possibly. I think he might actually be up a little bit of gold on Antai at this point. Gold check. Uh, but I don't know why. When you said gold check, my first thought was vibe check. I've spent too much time with you. Can we get a vibe check uh, on top lane? I think there's a little more vibes going on. Well, I think at the least, Jaffe's neutralized the gold lead uh, that Ante has. Um, yeah. I, I would say he's probably a little bit ahead just because the team gold's ahead and he's up so much CS. And he's probably the main source of their lead. Rare Adam getting good vision down. Yeah, I think so. Rare Adam has been, you know, getting doing better now. He's gotten out of the lane, can find these plays and be active in team fights. has been much more effective on the pike. He's dragging up in two minutes. Everyone just kind of clearing vision, clearing the control of the map. RLS trying to just pick up what they can right now. The wave is not in a really good position for them. Yeah, definitely not. Um, I'm surprised to see 
Essence Reaver second on Zaya, unless I am griefing the build usually. I don't think that's what you tend to do. Um, but yeah, usually go Phantom Dancer into Eye Edge. That's unique. Um, I don't think you're going to be getting off a ton of empowered auto attacks, so I'm a little surprised to see that come out. Uh, and then I, on the other end, I, do, I really do like Umbro, like uh, Umbro Glaive and Zombie Ward on Pike. It's just you're very safe to get deep wards. You're very slippery, and you're going to always leave vision behind when you clear somebody else's vision. It's just very obnoxious. It's very strong. I love Umbro Glaive. It's something I rush that item on on uh, Senna when I play her. I actually rush it on a lot of and any support that I get the opportunity to. I will rush Umbro yeah, Glaive on. I it's such it on a graves. Cool. It's pretty good. Thinking on Jarvan before. Um, little lethality Jarvan out of you. What? Little lethality Jarvan coming out. Yeah, I used to went back right before the mythic changes when or so or, or around there. I tried it a few times when I used to play a lot more Jarvan support. Not as good anymore, um, unfortunately, with the new items. But it is such Umbral Glaive itself. It's so good. It's just so gold value. And now oh, War Leader caught getting caught out oh, where Adam man. manages to finish the kill with the execute. Team yeah, that, all. That is pure vision denial. They didn't know. Yeah, I mean, they knew they weren't on Baron, right? We have they have a ward, but they didn't know where else they were. Every single thing is cleared. And they're just stacking a bush. They have enough damage to one pop. Anybody test Oh, and out. Coco goes in, and so does XT. They manage to get onto him. Ruby manages to get away. So does Tef. The feathers come through. And now here is Anti, but it is a 4v5. XT oh, going to go Jaffy's down, though. But Ruby on the side is also going to fall. Jaffe trying to hit Anti. Anti hanging by the wall, doing what we said earlier. But they lose the support in the process. Escape goes down. Anti getting rooted up and is going to go down. Jaffe versus Tef. Tef. Ooh, actually, he might be able to take Jaffe here. Jaffe on the run, trying to get away. Here comes careful. War Leader, though. Can Jaffe, Jaffe turn Jaffe's it around? Bad. There is a turret. Yeah, he is going to fall. Is he going to pick up a kill beforehand? He is not. Tef picks up the kill and manages to make a recovery for what otherwise was a pretty unfortunate fight for RLS. Yeah, I mean, Tef saved that from being the absolute worst thing ever, right? Um, that was looking very, very bad. Tef has been timing the... Nico ults fantastically with the feathers and then also avoiding any follow-up CC and damage. Positioned off to the side, let the tanks kind of absorb the damage, got the damage out and clean up a Jaffe kill. They lose a Wind Dragon, not the end of the world. They didn't lose Baron. Everybody can kind of reset. But they're going to have to start finding some more proactive plays because the gold lead is growing slowly, but it is growing. <laughs> yeah, the gold lead is starting to grow a bit now. 44 to 42,000. 2,000 gold lead up. RLS, though, Managing to finally get a breather, finally managed to get some vision out and gain some vision control. They are on the hunt. Here comes Rad. Rad. He doesn't see them, okay. though. He gets Whoops. picked. They're going right for him, but oh. he does manage to dash out and flash out and get away. So close there. <laughs> <laughs> That's something as a support. You walk into the bush and your life flashes before your eyes. That was a, that was a speedy pike that sp sprinted in, sprinted out. Uh, I... I think it's very dangerous to try this when you don't know where Nico is. They do it fast enough, but if Nico comes with ultimate, you're gonna you're gonna have a real bad time. I think mean, they just have to peel off, try to catch XT. Yeah. And... Oh, okay. Yeah. Or they yeah. just that... all right. Yeah, just get or it. Or they just get it for RLS free. Just yeah. Just RLS gets the dragon. The stones do manage to keep the engage away. It is a lot of damage. If you look over, Ruby does have the full Archangels, does have the Ludens, is a pretty, he's got some damage now and can't be just jumping through those stones. As Tef gets hooked by Adam, but there's no one to follow up. Now, does, uh, yeah, something to look at. Jaffe's up 100 CS. Um, it's going to be, I'm not sure who they're going to use to answer him on the sides. Even with Baron, uh, they could have Ante stand there, but they're going to need Ante in the team fights. I guess the safest option is Talia with wave clear and Baron and then just trying to ult into team fights and let Jaffe kind of be neutralized to the side. But the Fiora is going to become an issue even with Baron. Uh, Tef, however, has finished up Infinity Edge, which is you know a very big spike. Uh, MXL is still pretty far off that item. So I think a lot of damage. The team fight's going to come down to mostly Tef. Yeah, I think this is the Tef show for RLS. They need him to stay alive, to be able to dish out that DPS, get those feather daggers going everywhere and rip them back through their enemies but can they do it again they did it once they've done it twice can they do it a third time as rls puts the pressure with this baron 
on to the mid Adam has a flank if he, he wants does, it. He does have the flank. He is looking for it. Everyone trying to just buy space. Escape getting the vision down to keep track of them. They tear through this turret. Team up playing surprisingly scared and deciding not to fight. And they just let the turret go down. Not even trying to really defend it. Yeah, I think you need to just send it while you can before uh, Ruby gets oh, there. Oh, XT going in, finds Tef. He gets it. The ult coming through, though. Manages to drop it. The feathers buying space. And the down goes the Vi. The Volley Bear going in. They're looking for this fight. Oh, Tef manages to pick wow. up Coco on the side where Adam getting low. Adam going to go down, gets shut down by Anti. MXL also gets shut down. RLS may have found the fight. They may have found the game. Found no the one game. dead. It's just Jaffe alive. They're pushing onto the inhibitor turret. It's gonna fall the inhibitor is gonna fall too are they going to keep the push up 18 the seconds until the first respawn from xt the bear oh, yeah. yeah i think that's gonna be it i think they're gonna go unless jaffe can manage to hold the line is going in onto tef looking for it but the ace coming through from the pocket 80 carry of rls tef coming up huge and rls with a snap of their fingers turns it around and takes the win yeah i mean Props to Tef, right? On, first of all, Ante, fantastic. You know, held Jaffe in check, right? Jaffe got a CS lead, was not able to translate it into anything super surmountable. Tef played fantastically. Tef played amazing. You know, Tef really, really, really was the carry that game. Uh, that last fight, Team Odd didn't layer anything correctly at all. Their ults went off all at different times. They had Nico's ult go off significantly later than they'd like to have it go off. Uh, Samira came in late. Pike came in early. Vi came in early. It was just weird, and uh, RLS was very coordinated, and you know they just pull out the win. Yeah, they managed to pull it out by the skin of their teeth. It was so close for Team Aw, but like we said, like you know we we see that potential. We see the potential of this team when everything is working out, when things are coming together. There's so much potential on the side of Team Aw to be a dark horse. They're definitely a team to watch. As you know, they just got to sort some things out. And I, I, th I think there is potential for them to be that 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 team that surprises everyone come to the playoffs. But they've got a couple yeah. weeks still to sort it all out. You know, they have they have enough talent on the team to do it. They, there's just a few things to iron out, and I believe in them. I think that's true for almost everybody in the league, to be honest. I think every team has the ability to possibly compete for the finals this year. There's no UB to ruin everybody's parade. Some teams look better than others, but, you know, it's not that it's not that bad, right? Like there's no significant fall offs. I think almost every team has a chance to beat any other team on any given day. Yeah, Yubi's up ruining other teams in in the mythic. Yeah, league. they're out of here now. <laughs> we've we've finally kind of like freed ourselves of Jeff God Gamer and friends. <laughs> uh, it feels good to be liberated. It's just like a whole new era has shined light upon us, and it feels great. So I'm excited for the playoffs. I am too. We'll have to see if INT can reclaim their spot at the top of it, or if other teams are going to be able to find their way, if AWE and RLS can match up, set it, or even if Team AWE, or even you guys on WASH will be able to make the run to be our first new title holder in the Heroic League in three, actually this is the fourth season. Well, though, that does it from us, but don't go anywhere. We've got an interview with RLS's Tef coming up right after this.
Hello everyone, Chris Edgeworth here with tonight's second interview, joined this time by Tef, ADC from RLS. How are you feeling? Feeling pretty good after that game. Let's uh, let's start with the draft. I think there's a lot of things to talk about here. Anti getting their hands on the vaunted Volibear, uh, you know, often thought of as a jungle pick in most circles, but an anti-special. Um, the Nico came out on the other side in the mid lane. Uh, Ruby matched up with Talia on that. And then for, for you folks on the bot side, you had Zaya Karma into the Samira Pike, which is all about murdering you extra hard early. Talk to me a little bit about what your folks thought was coming into this draft and sort of how things shaped up and what you ended up up against. So yeah, I think going into this draft, we were thinking about picking a lot of comfort stuff for ourselves, making sure that we weren't uh, trying too much crazy stuff. Uh, despite their record, I think uh, Ah is a pretty good team and they have the ability to make an upset on us if we completely disrespect them. So um, we picked Comfort, like you said, Anti is Volibear, he's played that champion a bunch. We love it as a champion, uh, as a team. Uh, Diana, I think Richard is really solid on that champion. And I would say the only thing that kind of went bad for us uh, this game was like our, our macro, which is something that we're gonna like look over as a team and make sure that we don't make these silly mistakes again. Because to be honest, that's the only reason why this team was close. Yeah, one I did forget to, to touch on uh, War Leader on Diana there. And another thing that I that I always love to point out when it becomes relevant, I mean, the build with the Sunfire Diana is kind of quote-unquote cringe, but it is very potent, very powerful. And the thing that I like about it is that this is a mythicless build, or at least at this point in the build, you know, obviously you will uh, get, the, although <laughs> he's going for the Zanya's third, so, you know, mythics, uh, oh, it's, sorry, the Sunfire second, rather, is what yeah. I meant to say. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, looking at it, it's just like you get the Nasher's Tooth early, you don't need to get that mythic early, and the gold value of, like, the discrepancy between those two items is especially potent, especially when, um, you know, you can be clearing as hard as you can and be as uh, powerful as Diana is. So, shouts out to War Leader on that one. Let's talk a little bit about um, sort of the overall uh, tempo of this game. It was bloody overall matched uh, pretty evenly in kills um of course i think the telling thing is in the assists when it's a 17 to 18 kill game you folks had a slightly bit more assists so slightly bit more quote unquote uh team focused on getting those kills together what what was the overall comms like and the feeling like in this game uh with the game as it was so yeah uh Walking into bot lane, like you said earlier, they picked Samira Pike, which means that they are going to be looking for super aggressive trades and kills early, uh, which is why I was confused that their Vi would decide to path top lane. I mean, it makes sense. Anti is like one of the strongest top laners. He's probably the closest, like him and Jaffe are probably the closest matchup uh, for best top laner in the league right now. And so, it didn't really make much sense to me uh, why you would path away from you know a lane that needs to get stronger like get strong early, uh, and instead uh, their bot lane played the early game like really really strange. It just gave me a free kill like at level two, and so uh, from then on we kind of just were like oh we'll, we'll just slow down, play around more towards our bot side, um, and make sure that we don't just like toss away a lead somewhere else. Uh, we decided to make it a bit interesting with some of our early dragon calls and our early river, uh, river fights. Uh, like I said, we we're gonna, you know, take a look and make sure that none of this stuff gets too out of hand and that we can still, you know, uh, improve and make sure that we're, you know, the best team in the league, uh, like I think we are. And other than that, uh, I think that the overall tempo of the game was never incredibly out of our hands. The uh, They play like a very strange style where you can't 100% tell when they are deciding to make a play or when it's your turn to make a play, like the temp typical like tempo of a game. Um, and so instead we kind of just realized, well, they're going to play like this very strange style. We can just do this one little thing to counter it, which was just start Baron because they showed too many people on the map. And so we started Baron, got a free Baron, and recalled. And, uh, yeah. 
Well, one one final thing to touch on, of course, on uh, a little bit of self-indulgence is that uh, Coco the Dragon with the Nico pick into Ruby in this game early on. Uh, Nico does a deceptive uh, amount of damage, and of course the lockdown with uh, how how rough it can be. If you get the empowered root with how it works through the the, the minions or some something that empowers it, I think it's minions and pets also can empower it. I don't know if jungle monsters do, but um, anyway, um, Nico uh, was outputting a lot of damage on Ruby, a lot of pressure early, but in the end, you know those those things. The, those things have uh, diminishing returns, so to speak, when the rest of your team is able to uh, play smartly around that kind of pressure. And of course, uh, her passive is not as good when everyone knows what's up and you can see, uh, like, I uh, don't think that, I would not imagine that Samira would be over here on this part of the thing, so to speak, uh, when you see the glamour. So um, one final thing I did want to ask you about, Tef, is about your matchup uh, or your partner rather in the bot side with escape uh, escape of course uh, sw role swapping uh, you folks uh, have play you have played mostly ADC here talk to me a little bit about what it's like uh, laning with escape so yeah um, as people who followed the league last season would uh, remember I played support on RLS and Spencer played ADC on RLS and as the team that you know, we're called really late sign up for a reason. We're the last team to sign up because they needed an eighth team. Uh, we thought it would be pretty funny to uh, role swap both of us because I enjoy playing ADC and Spencer thinks it's funny if he would uh, just role swap and instantly be the best support in the league, which I think he has been, uh, to be honest. And so, yeah, it's fun playing ADC for Spencer because he has a similar like approach to the game as me now. Um, and so he knows when I can, when he can roam, when I need him in lane, and uh, how to help call fights and make sure that I'm not getting dove too hard or anything. So it's very, very relaxing to play with him. All right. Well, Tef, thanks so much for this interview. Uh, before we step away, as always, your final thoughts, any shout outs, any banter you'd like to leave with us on the desk? Yeah. So uh, I just remember that earlier today there was a conversation between. Uh, uh, between uh, Rare Adam and War Leader about the MVP vote. And uh, I think this game kind of speaks for itself. I think War Leader played this game pretty well for the conditions that were happening. And I think that picking Pike is just bad. So other than that, it's uh, another dub for the Ruby League server. And uh, we're going to make it two more next week. There you go. Got to make sure we get it in since it got cut off yesterday. So another dub for the Ruby League server. I'll throw in my my shouts out there. So well done, folks. That's game two in the bag. We're going to be back very shortly with game three. So don't go too far. More heroic coming up next.